What is going on, Hobby family? It is your boy, K-Dub, and this is K-Dub's High Five. Five rapid-fire questions with your favorite hobby faces, and today, it's one of the Twitter favorites. He's a Twitter influencer. He's a hobby content creator. He's the owner and CEO of DGA Slabs. We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, welcome, my good friend, Drew, a.k.a. at Larry Legend on Twitter. How are you, my man? Good. How are you doing today? I'm great, man. I appreciate you joining me. I know we've talked about it for a while now, even set it up a couple of times. I'm glad that we finally uh, were yeah. able to make this happen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know I've been delaying a few times and that's that's 100 percent on me, but I appreciate you rescheduling. It's all right, man. Celebrity status. I appreciate the time. Nah. All right, man, how it works. I'm going to throw five questions at you, one right after another, all hobby related. You ready to take on the high five? Let's do it. All right, man. Your Twitter handle, which I love, is Lair E Legend. How'd you land on that for your Twitter handle or your social media handle? So I'll try and give as brief as possible. My actual name is Lawrence. So growing up, everyone like everyone called me Drew, but a lot of my close friends called me Larry. Um, kind of as a joke at first, but I started playing basketball. Uh, I sh shot a lot of threes, big, tall, white guy. So the nickname became Larry Legend. And that was one of my favorite basketball players. And it became one of my gamer tags. And now I've kind of taken it everywhere with me in life. So it's always been Larry Legend. But I could never get the username Larry Legend. So I always did Larry E Legend. Got it, man. You got, you got to play in what, what's out there, right? So Yes, sir. Is there a sweeter jump shot than Larry Bird? I mean. I mean, you're going to have to you have to do a coin flip between him and Dirk. And that's what you got to do. But that's my preferences. Those are my preferences. I love it, man. I, I don't know, man. I just. When he throws up the three and he puts oh, yeah. it, that's it, man. I mean, that's it for me. So money. All right, man. Uh, let's talk about your hobby journey, your collecting journey. Uh, you know, who would you say have been some of your biggest personal influences when it comes to the hobby or collecting? So this is a great one. I thought about this a ton. And the one person I just I was thinking, I was thinking the one person that came back to Marshall's cards. Okay. So Marshall was my manager at Stetson. So we spent a lot of time with him. Then after the season ended, I'll, I don't know how we got on it, but we just spent a lot of time in card shops all out through uh, Central and Northern Central Florida, like the Oviedo area. Yeah. And, um, you know, we kept pulling cards. This is back when 2015 blasters of Prism for basketball were 50, like 60 bucks, 50 bucks. So yeah. those are like the golden days. And nowadays you look at them, they're like $1,000. Um, so I spent a lot of time with Marshall and we had a bunch of cards. I mean, Marshall had this crazy collection and yeah. I was like, Marshall, how do you, how do you sell cards? How do you buy cards? Like, what do you do? He's like, bro, you have to make a Twitter. So if you look at my Twitter, anytime I'm on a live video, my original name is trading card outlet. I made that in like 2015 yeah. and I went inactive for about three years, four years. And I came back, uh, big into it in about 2020, 2021 with my uh, buddy, Zach Hodge. Uh, he put me back on it. He's not on Twitter, but he got me back in trading cards. First card I bought was a Trey Young rookie card. And I was like fully infatuated with it. And then I would say um, one person who like, I don't know if it was like a competition type thing, but I always saw JB's profile. He had like 10,000 followers all the time. And I was like, I want to have that many. So that kind of pushed me to get more involved in Twitter. For sure, man. I love JB, man. He's been on the high five before. I've seen it. I've seen it. Yes, sir. Love it. Love it. All right, man. Well, let's get to the cards. Uh, is there a grail card out there uh, for you, my friend? So I was thinking about this as well. So there's a grail card and then there's like a grail grade. So for me, I feel like the majority of cards with a few exceptions, like I wouldn't buy a Jordan Crows are hyper expensive, but the grail card and grail grade put together for me would be the Larry Bird, you know, try cut rookie card, PSA 10. I think that's, to me, that's the most absurd card of all time. Um, I mean, Jordans are cool. PSA 10, LeBron's are cool. PSA. 10. I think that card having that in perfect condition would be absolutely like the grail. For sure. Are you saying just based on the way the card was made getting? Yeah. It? Just everything that goes into it, the preparations, the corners, you know, the year it was made and all this, everything involved, just having that in a pristine card would be absolutely my grail. And you're talking the one with uh bird, um, magic, magic and I mean, why am I blanking on the last guy? Gee, Willikers. Well, that tri-cut card. Gee, Bali. But I mean, I'm saying there's there's uh, slits in that card, right? So I'm Yeah, not... there's the preparations, and those have, um, they can be off-center, they can be overcut, they can be undercut. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. So the grading of that as a 10 is probably a lot more intense than it would be on any Exactly. So that, that was kind of what I was looking at. Like, that card itself was, like, just, to me, one of the craziest things. 
Love it. I love it. All right, man. Well, let's get to the product. You said 2015 Prism back in the day, but yeah, all the money in the world, uh, you can rip any box you want. Uh, what box are you ripping and why? Um, see, like, I, you know, you want to go with the, you know, the easy answers, but for my generation, my age it has to be 0304 Chrome basketball. <laughs> I, I just feel like you have to. I mean, that's to me, growing up on, that's the most iconic class for me. You know, you have uh, LeBron, Wade, Melo, Bosch, like one of the best sets of all time for me. Um, so that's, that, that was pretty easy, I think, for me. Yeah. Do you have a, a favorite player? I mean, is there a card that you'd like to hit out of that? Or, I mean, obviously LeBron would be great, but do you have a... Uh, you know, Wade Refractor. Wade Refractor. Yeah. Okay. I uh, like that card. I love Wade. I love it. I love it. All right, one thing I appreciate about you on Twitter, man, you're, you're about the relationship. You're about connecting with people. Um, how, have you, how would you say that kind of hobby relationships have impacted the way that you do the hobby for yourself? Oh, um, like for one, uh, definitely being more involved with, I want to say giving back, but just involved with everyone on the timeline. Mm -hmm. um, making sure that everything you do, like if, if you cut someone a deal, like it's much more important to have that relationship than it is to have an extra few bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, that's always been something I've really been big on. You know, it's, um, one thing I've always tried to do is like every now and then if someone wants to buy something, I say, what do you want to pay? And whatever they say, I usually give it to them for just right. because like, I mean, that's just kind of the general gist of the majority of people on here, which is why I love um, you know, the relationships you make. I just love the people, the way the interactions are. I, I love having conversation on the timeline, you know, tell someone Michael Jordan was bad at basketball than having an argument with them. But at the end of the day, you know, you're just messing around. Sure. Um, so I'd say the relationships have been really good. Um, have some personal ones. It was really fun going up to Chicago, um, meeting, you know, all the guys, putting a face to the avatar on the, on the Twitter. So that was really fun doing that, meeting Jimmy, Channel's brothers, all of them. Yeah. Um, Mooch, just the whole nine yards was really cool. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, I've had a lot of friends, like lifelong friends that I've made along the way, which is really important to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and Mooch, does he look anything like Sam Perkins? I've always wondered. Oh man, Mooch is, uh, Mooch is a little different, but he's probably <laughs> the same height, probably the same height. That's a, that's a big man. I love it, man. I love it. All right. Well, I got one bonus question because as I said at the beginning, uh, I love your hobby content. I love your personality. And one of your, your biggest things was the DGA slabs, man. You, you made the video and then you got people chiming in, asking me questions. What's this going to grade DGA slabs? You know, what was the thinking behind that? How'd you come up with that? Just talk to me about the creativity there. So DGA, that was 100%. I think I was home for maybe, I think it was over the summer. I think I was visiting over the summer. I was you know, in my room and I, I saw HGA drop the video. And that video, uh, I think everyone knows the video, like the, they, they had the scanners up, they had our artificial intelligence and they showed like, it was a really good start. And then they had people in like gaming chairs in a dimly lit closet. And they're like, these are our graders. And I was like, this is hysterical. And everyone was loving it. Like everyone was love hating on that video. So I was like, all right, DG or uh, HGA, let's make it DGA. So it was absolutely just supposed to be a pure parody of that. So a lot of people saw it and they're like, I don't really get this reference. I'm like, you know, it's fine. Let's run with it. So I made a few shirts. I've worn them to card shows and people are like, so what's DGA? And I was like, I can't really explain this, but it was, uh, it was something that like, you know, if you've been on hobby Twitter and you've been active on it, it was like a really great, it was a really great time and joke. I've just ran with it too long, but I still love it. Oh, I still love it too, man. I love it when it still pops up, man. It still just makes me laugh. I mean, that's the beauty of yes, hobby Twitter, man. Some of those jokes just, just last. So yeah, yeah man. keep it up. All right. Well, dude, that's all I got, man. We got a high five at the end of the high five. Throw it up. Well, I appreciate you, sir. Yeah, man. Uh, check out Drew on Twitter at Lair E Legend. Uh, you can also follow me if you're bored at Mr. K Dub. Uh, always remember, be the good. Appreciate you joining me, bro. And we'll uh, yes, catch sir, appreciate you on the next high five. This is a demo sound of freeintromusic.com.